Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here, following up on our recent video about the PlayStation 2 emulator for PS4. In our first look at the emulation technology, we were interested in the overall feature set, but what really piqued our interest was our initial look at performance. On top of quadrupling native rendering resolution and adding trophy support, running Star Wars Jedi Starfighter under emulation seemed to be producing significantly higher frame rates on PS4 compared to the PlayStation 2 original. Which led us to wonder, is this title an exception or are there actually performance gains to be made on all titles running under emulation? So let's kick off this analysis with another game we have available for testing, Star Wars Bounty Hunter. This game runs with VSync Active and as you've probably noticed by now, the PS4 is offering a substantial Substantial boost to performance compared to the original game running on PlayStation 2 hardware. The game is running with an unlocked frame rate but using a classic double buffer V-Sync. If Bounty Hunter is running fast enough it hits 60 FPS, but if it fails to meet the render time target it drops back down to 30 FPS in a sudden dramatic shift. It's not ideal at all and very few modern games actually pursue this performance strategy. The sudden shifts in visual feedback and response are just too off-putting. But the game's unlocked frame rate means only good things for the same code running under emulation on PS4. It hits the 60fps render time target far more consistently, therefore the game runs at the fastest possible frame rate for longer durations. That's not to say it's a perfect readout though, as you can see. Judder is commonplace throughout the experience, but the overall gameplay is just much better than the original PS2 title in many ways. It looks better, it's much smoother across the run of play and the controls are much more responsive as a result. The second title we're going to look at is Star Wars Race of Revenge, another game running with an unlocked frame rate but with a very important difference. VSync is disabled, meaning that a new frame is dispatched to the display as soon as it's ready. The good news is that you lose the sudden jarring jumps between 16 to 33 millisecond frame times seen in a VSync title like Bounty Hunter. But the bad news is that you pay the price with constant screen tear. This wasn't really so much of an issue back in the day, with the old style CRT TVs we used to play on, a lot of visual artefacts like this were much harder to spot. The end result is smoother performance and more consistent response from the controls, and none of the jarring leaps between 30 to 60 FPS. Now the interesting thing here is how PlayStation 4 runs the same code under emulation. We lose the odd frame here and there, and very occasional tearing crops up in the middle and bottom third of the screen. But the increase to performance overall is colossal. Finally, let's revisit Jedi Starfighter, the game we originally looked at. Now this title is very much in line with Bounty Hunter. V-Sync is engaged once more, frame rate is unlocked, so once again we are careening between 30 to 60 FPS at any given point, resulting in an inconsistent experience plagued with stutter. So does the PS2 emulation for PlayStation 4 guarantee us higher frame rates across all emulated titles? Well, it's still too early to say for sure, but the fact that there are substantial performance increases on all three of the Star Wars titles we have to experiment with right now strongly suggests that we will see gains on many and maybe even all of the games that eventually end up running on PS4. And that opens up some interesting opportunities. Take Gran Turismo 4 for example, it's a classic PS2 title, but Polyphony Digital pushed the hardware there, resulting in drops beneath the target 60fps. Adaptive V-Sync was in play on that title, meaning that racing in graphically intense areas could see intrusive screen tear. The PS4 emulator could perhaps fix that. Konami's classic Metal Gear Solid 3 also employed adaptive V-Sync, but it too could suffer from noticeable tearing when the engine was under load. We would love to see what the emulation code could produce here. But there are still PS2 titles running with a 30fps frame rate cap, and we're not quite sure what would happen there, whether we'll see an increase in performance or not. It may depend on the title, but we suspect that the performance limit wouldn't be removed, but we won't really know what the situation is until such a game comes along. Anyway, it's all pretty exciting stuff. That's all we have for now, but as soon as more PS2 emulation software becomes available, we'll be sure to check it out. In the meantime, we hope you like the vid, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more, but for now, thanks for watching.